the fruit of the Spirit, joy. Heavenly Father, as we continue in these teachings, we pray that your grace shall be sufficient for us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue with our teachings, looking at the fruit of the Spirit. This time around, we are going to study joy. The joy referred to as a fruit of the Spirit is different from happiness. Joy is not the same as happiness. Happiness is dependent on outward circumstances. Happiness is determined by your environment, by your outward circumstances. Joy, on the other hand, is not affected by the environment. Neither is it determined by circumstances. Now we are defining both by the scriptures now. On the contrary, joy thrives best in difficult and tough situations. And we shall explain that in a moment. The fruit of the Spirit, joy, is regarded as God's supernatural response to the attacks of the devil on the children of God. It is only those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. It is only those who have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, who are manifesting the fruit of the Spirit that are capable of demonstrating this level of joy. The fruit of joy is Holy Ghost endowed exuberance that is released when the going gets tough, difficult, and strenuous. Remember, we are looking at the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is not your fruit. Love, joy, peace that we are looking at is not your own. It, it doesn't belong to the believer. It is the evidence of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. That is why the seed that is sown at conversion is very, very important. You must make sure that people are genuinely converted by telling them the right thing and making sure their salvation is based on the truth. According to Dake, Finis Dake, the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5 uh, verses 22 and 23, Ephesians 5, 9, James 3, 17, are those gracious dispositions and habit which the Holy Spirit produces in those in whom he dwells and walks. Since joy is a fruit produced by the Holy Spirit in those whom he indwells, it is therefore difficult, if not outrightly impossible, for those not born of the Spirit to manifest joy in the midst of afflictions and adversities. At times you've seen people who are highly placed, people whom you consider strong, when an affliction befalls them, when a misfortune befalls them, you see written all over them, sadness. You see, you will wonder, this man that I thought was so strong, and you have to be encouraging him, be strong, be strong, be strong. Why? Because that indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost is not there. Very few people have been known to face serious crises, and they are smiling, and they are calm, and they could still sing. The Lord makes it clear in John chapter 3 verse 6 that he which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. If a man is born of the spirit, he will manifest the joy of the Holy Ghost. If a man is not born of the Holy Spirit, you cannot fake it. When disaster comes, you cannot fake it. It's not possible. You can't fake it. This scripture that we just read, John chapter 3 verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit, 
This scripture refers us back to the earlier point that adequate attention must be paid to the salvation message presented to the new convert. The word is the seed, the word of God. That is the seed that is sown. It is that seed of the word of God that will become a tree that will bear the fruit. If the right seed is not sown, it becomes difficult for Holy Spirit to produce the fruit of joy. Because God is not going to build upon the foundation laid by the flesh. You cannot start with the flesh and hope to transit to the spirit. No, you must first destroy the foundation of the flesh and build afresh with the spirit. That is how it works. You cannot say, well, I've been doing it for 20 years. Well, now, let me now transit to do it properly in the Holy Spirit. No, sir. You must first destroy that foundation of the flesh and start afresh. Because he which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. This may be the reason why many Christians find it difficult to handle crises and persecutions according to scriptural standards. Because many, unfortunately, might have started on foundation of the flesh with the wrong seed, with the wrong salvation message, with the wrong teachings, and then crisis comes. You are now looking for joy, the fruit of joy in the midst of affliction. You will not find it. You will not find it. It is important to pay attention to the seed. The seed is the word of God. The New Testament in most instances, associated joy with affliction. The New Testament associates joy with affliction, thereby pointing to a fact that the fruit of joy is released by the Holy Spirit. Remember, I need to stress this again. It is the fruit of the Spirit, not your fruit. It is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So, the fruit of joy is released whenever affliction comes. We will see some Bible passages now that whole New Testament associates joy with affliction. Joy is not produced by the believer. It is produced by the Holy Spirit inside the believer in whom he dwells. This fact runs contrary to the shallow and artificial noise making prevalent in most Christian assemblies. People are trying to work themselves up. Pastors try to work up congregation to feel joyful. They say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Somebody, everybody, shout hallelujah. Everybody, shout hallelujah. Seven times hallelujah. Fourteen times hallelujah. It's artificial. It's artificial. It's men trying to work up that feeling of joy. The moment crisis comes, you will see everybody will become sad and sorrowful. Now let's look at some Bible passages to underscore the point that we have just made. That in the New Testament, joy and affliction seem to go together in most cases. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. The Thessalonians received the word in much affliction, but with joy of the Holy Ghost. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. First Peter. 
chapter 1, verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Now, in, for the moment, they are in heaviness through manifold temptations, but they greatly rejoice. James chapter 1, verse 2. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. The word affliction in the Greek comes from philipsis. The Greek word is philipsis, translated affliction, which refers to a heavy pressure situation. In those days, in those days, when criminals or offenders were punished and they were to be punished unto death, they would tie the offender, place him on the ground flat, and then start piling on top of him heavy objects. They place a heavy stone, then they place another heavy stone on top of that one, then they place another heavy one, then they place another heavy one with the intention that the weight will crush him to death. It's a cruel punishment. Very cruel. That is the word flipsis. That is the image that is being uh, conjured, so to say, when you encounter the word affliction in the New Testament. It's things keep going wrong with the intention of crushing the person. It's like in real life, somebody just lost his job. And he gets home, he hears that his wife has had an accident. He's in the, she's in the hospital. And the medical bill is going to pay. And rushing to the hospital, somebody called him to tell him that his house is on fire. And then he's rushing back. He had an accident with his own vehicle. You, 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 you see how it is piling up that such a person is going to be crushed under the weight of the series of afflictions. That is flipsis. Now, if such a fellow is a Christian and he has the fruit of the Spirit working in him, and now you will be bewildered when you meet such a person and he's just smiling and he's singing praises. That is the fruit of joy. Because under such a situation, nobody will smile. When believers experience this crushing pressure, the crushing pressure, something like what I've just described, that normally should have produced sorrow and despondency, Holy Spirit releases the fruit of joy. It has often elicited bewildered reaction from unbelievers to observe Christians going through so many problems and yet joyfully singing praises and rejoicing. It is unearthly. Such rejoicing in the midst of adversity could only come from heaven. This is the fruit that was manifested in Paul and Silas. In Acts chapter 16, Verses 22 to 25. Now we sing, Paul and Silas, they sang, they prayed, the Holy Ghost came down. But nobody talks about Paul and Silas, they were flogged. Paul and Silas, they were held bound in stocks. Paul and Silas, they were thrown into jail. They don't sing that one. It is just, they prayed, they sang, the Holy Ghost came down. What happened before they prayed and sang? It is encouraging to read the account of Paul and Silas singing and praising God after they had been flogged, cast into the prison, and in the prison, they were fasting to the stock. How many Christians would be joyful in such a situation? 
Most modern day Christians will already be querying God or commanding that all their enemies should fall down and die. In fact, if possible, the modern day Christian will have used prayer to kill the jailer before salvation will reach him and his family. The fruit of joy encourages believers to overlook offenses and laugh at opposition. When believers manifest the tendency of the world to rise and fight for their rights, in most cases, it is because they find nothing joyful about the situation they are in. To be joyful under afflictions requires grace. The Greek word for joy is kara. The Greek word for joy is kara, which is derived from charis, the Greek word for grace. The implication is that joy comes by grace. It requires grace to rejoice in the midst of afflictions and heavy pressures. The fruit of joy is totally unlike human happiness, which varies with situations and circumstances. The most that the world can offer is temporary happiness, and it is dependent upon favorable conditions. On the contrary, when the going gets tough, the child of God starts smiling because the life of God within him rises with joy to defy the satanic pressure. This is the reason that the scriptures can say, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. The joy does not belong to the believer. The fruit of the spirit that is called joy, it does not belong to the believer. It is owned by God and it reflects God laughing at Satan. As the devil seeks to oppress someone seated on the right hand of God in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So it is God laughing that is being expressed by the believer laughing at afflictions, laughing at crises. When the going gets tough, God imparts his joy to the believer and causes the believer to see the situation the way that God himself sees it. People can pretend to have joy. People can. When the going is good, people can pretend to be joyful. But there is no faking it when crisis sets in. You can't fake it. It's either you have it or you don't have it. You can tell yourself when crisis comes, you will be strong. You will, it has not come. When it comes, you cannot fake joy. It will show immediately whether you have the fruit of joy or not. I pray that Holy Spirit shall greatly and mightily indwell you. I pray that Holy Spirit shall mightily manifest joy in you, no matter what your situation or your circumstance is. God bless you.